Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have a very cool unboxing here. I'm going to be looking at uh, some knives that came in from QSP. We had a chance to check some of these out. And um, um, I, I think these were a first run kind of production, prototype sort of run. And so I had a few that came in that were just right out of the factory. And um, I contacted them and uh, I think we've, we're going to address some things here and we'll find out if that was done, right? So we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and be opening up today with my QSP Lark. Cool little knife if you haven't checked this out. It's kind of got a, it's got a nice liner lock, 14C28N steel. It's got a front flipper and it's got a kind of a very hidden uh, fr um, traditional flipper, right? So I do like this little guy. This is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see what we got. Uh, is that the only tape? Nope, we got one right here. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and look. Let's make sure there's no paperwork in there so it doesn't jump out. All right. All right, so it looks like two knives. We'll go ahead and do both unboxings together. All right, very cool. All right, so the first one, I'll just put this over here to the side. The first one is the Grebe. It's a QS147D1. This is a 14C28. Uh, blade stone washed. It's in JG10 handle. So let's see how that looks. All right, cool. We got all neat little things in here. Very, very cool. Let's go ahead and open that up. All right, we'll put that off to the side over here. All right, so I love the JG10. It's always one of my favorites. I like the deep pocket carry clip. I like the steel liners. You can see all the weight relief in there. It comes out really nicely with the JG10. JG10 is very trans translucent. The nice thing about JG10 is it's raw G10, and you can dye it like any color you want. So if you like this look, cool. If you want it to be black, orange, red, whatever, you can dye it all of those things. It's got nice thumb stud. Looks like a pretty robust blade. V pretty well centered. I like that. It's got a flipper with some jimping on there. That's really cool. It is a button lock. So let's go ahead and give this a flip. Really nice. Let's see that there. And let's do the, let's do a little flip with the thumb stud. All right, that's cool. Let's see. Can we do a reverse flick? Oh, oh, can we? I sort of can do a reverse flick. Oh, that's really stiff. Okay. I can get the reverse flick. And now, the, with the other one, the issue I had with the other one that I got in, I, you couldn't use the thumb studs. The thumb studs were like locked in place. And I wasn't sure if that was, you know, I, okay, let me just be straight up. The first run that we had of this, I couldn't deploy the thumb stud at some point. At some point, I had to do two fingers. It was very uncomfortable. It was ripping the skin off my hand. These thumb studs are much, much better. The flipper works really nicely, and the button lock works. It had incredible button lock stick and I think there was some you know when you do a first run of anything it's a brand new knife it's a brand new design right this brand new design is called a Grebe uh, really really cool and I believe this other one is also the Grebe yeah so this is the, the fancy S35 VN version so we're going to look at the two together um, this is the budget version really really cool oops I, I didn't mean to do that flips really nicely right it's got nice, pretty good, pretty good action, really solid, and the thumb stud is definitely works a lot better on this one now. And I can't reverse flick it. Before, there's no way. There was no way I was ever going to be able to reverse flick that. And this is definitely much, much nicer. So that's really cool. For the price and what you get, it's pretty robust blade. I like this. It's kind of a clip point, almost looks like a bowie, right? Clip point bowie, because it almost comes up here. So it's got a feel of a bowie, but you know, sort of a clip point. I don't know. It is a button lock, so that's really cool. Button lock is certainly solid. No, no played play. Let's see how it goes in with the little plunge grind lock. Locks in pretty good. Yeah, it's in there pretty solid. Yeah, sometimes, you know, when you get the button lock, it can have a little a uh, little rock in there because that plunge lock, when it engages in there. And this is one of those plunge locks that's within. Yeah, it's within the, you can see that it's within where the thumb studs is. I don't know if you can see that. It goes in there and it's kind of a, the, uh, the lock catches in there. So that's kind of cool. All right. Very cool. I like that. All right, so that's that's the JG10 14C28 blade steel. Did it say on here? I think it said on here somewhere. I thought it was on here. Maybe it's not on this one. Does it say in here? Am I seeing anywhere? Well, it says it on the box, and I know it is, but that's cool. I, let me just tell you, I don't mind the fact that there's no billboarding on here. 
I'm perfectly fine with that. I know some people would like to see that. The QSP logo here, really nice, very aesthetic. I love the, the polished look. And this is actually a stonewash blade, which is great because, you know, you use one of these knives and it tends to be, you know, you won't see scratches as well. It's nicely rounded on the top, which is really cool. Comes to a very nice tip uh, point. Has a nice sharp edge. It has a very small sharpening choil. Some people will be bothered by that. I tend to sharp my knives all the time, so it's not a big deal for me if, unless I need to reprofile the edge for certain reasons or if I did some really crazy work. And that works. You could do the trigger here. I wouldn't recommend that choking up. Plenty of room. Got medium to medium large hands. You see that? I got plenty of hand on here. Um, not really a lot of choke up. This kind of limits your hands. So if you've got really big hands, you may be going over the edge right here. So, you know, you have to think about that. This is okay for a three and a half finger, three finger knife. So if you like it, this could be like a little fifth pocket knife for you. So that's definitely one to consider. So that's that one. It is stainless steel. Deep pocket clip, carry clip. Yep, it is stainless steel. We are looking at T8s. A T8, I mean T8 here, T6s, T6s, T6, T6. Yeah, I like that it's got a nice insert here. That's cool. Gives it a nice aesthetic for, and it is lefty uh, swappable. So lefties rejoice. I do, yeah, it does have cage ceramic ball bearings in here. So that's really nice, right? It is a plunge lock, which allows you, you know, little, little features there. You know, this is definitely a light switch. I don't feel that I could do a push button higher. This is certainly uh, kind of a, a light switch. I don't know. I don't, I don't think, yeah, because of the, you know, you see the flipper. This is almost like a Rick Hinder flipper. This reminds me a lot of Rick Hinder. It's not as curved as much, but because of that, this is definitely going to be a light switch. I, I would not be comfortable on my finger after a while for that. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's compare it with this one here. This is going to be the fancy version. And it's supposed to have a nice carbon fiber and a different blade steel. So let's take a look at that. I'll put that over to the side. All right, so comparing this to that one. All right, so this is a kind of a red, I mean, a blue, white, and black carbon fiber, I think. Is it carbon fiber? Does it say? Uh, let's see. Uh, stone wash, see here, blue carbon fiber handle. Yeah, uh, black, white, and blue carbon fiber handle. So it is a carbon fiber handle, and it is S35VN blade steel. Let's see, does it say on there S35VN? No, again, very minimal. Billboarding. It is a Tonto shape. A true Tonto, though. Really nice. I do like that Tonto blade. Uh, it's not dual grind. They're both flat grind, so there's not a hollow grind here. But comes to a very robust, kind of almost to the edge. And then goes a very, very sharp tip, which is great for getting into manure, um, mulch, fertilizer for your yard, or dog food, cat food, or cases of water, opening letters boxes, Christmas boxes. The thumb studs work really nicely, right? The flipper works really nicely. The lock works really nicely. Let's see, can we reverse flick this? Yep, absolutely. Let's do it on the other side. Yep, absolutely. And this one, oops. Now the thumb studs are pretty close against the handle there, which makes it a little bit challenging. You've got to get pretty close to get in there for it to be comfortable. You can't really get behind it where, because I really want to be right about there. And then that, that's like the best leverage I think is right there. I find it true over here. So you see if you get about right there, that's the best leverage. If I try to go up this way, it's a little harder. And likewise, if I come over here, that's the best leverage. And so for reverse flick, it's going to be right there as well for the reverse flick. Oh, let me get in there. Aha. Oh. Now I'm having trouble. Hold on. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. All right, so this one is not as friendly on the reverse flick. I wonder if that'll break in over time. We'll have to see. I mean, I'll flip it a little bit. I certainly won't have it for long because I've got to send it on. And I can't take it apart. I can't tune it. I can't clean anything out. This is not my knife. I have to send it so each person in our pass around group gets the same feeling. I do notice the clip is a much nicer and it is reversible. So lefties rejoice, but this looks like it might be titanium. Yeah, that is titanium for sure. Steel liners for sure. Okay, so still steel liners. Uh, I like the black hardware. It's blacked out like that. I wonder if they make a non-blacked out version, but I like the carbon fiber. Nicely rounded around the handles, just like these are. Uh, this is a little, it's not quite as soft as these, these corners. Uh, these corners are softer. This is a little sharper edge. It's not terrible. It's not like razor sharp, right? It's just not as smooth. Uh, but I do like the edges here on this one and the reverse flake on this one's really nice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I will say for, again, this is probably not going to be super expensive compared to this. So this is, I'm going to guess this is a 65, 70, anywhere from 50 to $70 knife. I'm going to guess this one's probably going to be anywhere from a hundred to a hundred and $20 knife, I'm going to guess. I don't know. We'll have to look it up. I could be wrong. This is just purely a guess on my part. 
I think that would be a reasonable price. S35VN blade steel, pretty nice. I like the Tonto blade. It's a really nice, even grind. Yeah, on both sides. Actually, it's really outstanding. Very sharp. Got a nice tip there. Good for choking up. Again, you're dealing with uh, medium. I have large hands width-wise, medium length-wise. So I'm very comfortable large like this. I think extra large would be two, but you get into double extra, uh, double extra large, you're going to be getting close to being a three and a half, three finger kind of knife. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, it again, this is st steel liners, and we see a lot of uh, cutouts on the steel liners for weight relief, which is very cool. It does have a little extra titanium clip? That's a cool feature to maybe have over there. But it is nicer steel, so you know you QSP is notoriously great for having great value on budget knives. So you know I can't imagine that this is going to be ridiculously overpriced. It's not quite up there like uh, with some of their um, more fancier knives, if you will. Like I have a traditional pocket knife. Um, Py uh, not pyrite, um, penguin, right? Yes, I have, I feel like I'm, I'm not remembering this correctly. Sorry guys, it's a little late, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to catch up on my reviews. I got a lot of stuff trying to do and we've been super busy with work and my kids and school and football games and band and all sorts of stuff. So I'm trying to do it all, um, but this is really cool. I think, um, yeah, is it the penguin? Yeah, I think the penguins. I have the mini penguin. I have the the large penguin. Those are all really, really cool knives. I like those a lot. And those, uh, the tra traditional pocket knives are Jig Titanium and it's M390. Very cool. My lander is made by QSP and I have a lander that's Smoking Mountain Knife Works, uh, Smoking M Mountain Knife Works exclusive. Has S35VN blade steel and has Mars Valley fat carbon scales. Very cool. And then I have another one that's done by uh, Urban EDC and it's M390 blade steel with some cool Sagai pattern on there. But I put some unlocked composite scales on that. So anyways, all QSP, all great quality knives, as these two are as well. My favorite, honestly, is going to be the Tanto one. Now, I would love to see a different carbon fiber. I don't hate this. I really don't. This is not weird as some of the other ones. This is kind of cool. This is, you know, more doable, as far as I'm concerned, than some of the other stuff that I see out there. There's some weird jungle versions. I'm not just a fan of that really funky, kind of funky, fresh, super whatever, funky fresh, delicious, whatever, weird um, carbon fiber flavors, whatever you want to call them, you know. Yeah, I know it's late. I'm coming up with weird stuff. But I, I like this. I like this a lot. This is this is much nicer. Uh, I, I like the Tonto shape of the blade. That's really cool. This definitely could be a car knife. It could be a great knife to keep in the car or keep in a backpack or keep around just as a work knife. I, I do like that. So to me, that's cool. 14C28, it's great budget steel. This is really nice. I wish this wasn't as tight in the lockup. It's still super tight. It's better. It's better than the first. The first one I got was just terrible. Okay. If you'd gotten it, you probably would have returned the knife. I mean, it was you. You. Would, I was scraping the skin off my thumb just to be able to deploy it. It was that bad. And it wasn't a matter of angle because I'm getting the best angle here, and that work. And that, that works pretty good. Even here, sometimes it locks up a little bit harder. And I don't know because this is a fancier one. Maybe there's a little extra care, and this one is, you know, trying to be rushed out the, the door. But uh, I was, yeah. There we go. I was reverse flicking it earlier. Come on. Okay, now it's becoming a little more challenging. Reverse flick again. Uh, let's see, can we do it? Okay, now I can't reverse flick it. All right, and so I don't know what's going on there. Um, so just take that with a grain of salt. You know, if you get the 14C28, if you don't like to reverse flick your thumb suds, you're not a fidget person, you'll probably be fine. I will tell you the button lock works way better on this one for sure. Uh, I do know that for our pass around, I can put a little oil in there, you know, just to make sure it doesn't rust up. And I might do that just to see if that changes a little bit. I'll put a little uh, 85 weight nano oil in there into the button lock. A lot of times that helps the, the button locks loosen up, right? You can do that. Um, I do that with all of my button locks and it really does help. So I will try that before the review and give you my thoughts on that and see if that changes. But that's all I can do to it. I can't take it apart. I can't clean it. I can't put skiff washers. I can't do anything whatsoever to this because this is how I need to pass it to the next group. But I think they're both really cool. I think they're definitely worth a try. My first impression is, is yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. Um, depending on how much this one is, if it's over $100, it'll be part of the standard knife. Uh, as if it was under, if it was right at $100 or less, this would, this, this likely could become a very, very recommended knife for sure. I'll have to see what the price is on this one. Uh, this one could be a very recommended knife. But I'm having 
a little bit way less issues with the with the button with the thumb stud that I did on the first one that I got and we had to send back this is much better for sure but it's still pretty sticky and like I said I'll put a little oil in there see if that clears it up and, and loosens it up but man this one's pretty tough right now and I'm hoping it changes not see it's already starting to separate my thumb here from that thumb th from that thumb stud so that that's the thing that I didn't care for and and I have a knife that does that, you're out. I'm, I'm not keeping it. I, it's either being returned, giving it away, giving it as a present, but no, no. I don't, I don't deal with those types of knives. Those knives just don't work for me. So I can't, I, I'm not going to struggle with a knife like that. And so we'll see. We'll see if this, this becomes a recommended knife. As it stands right now, this one is very likely to not be a recommended knife. This has a much better chance of being a recommended knife, absolutely for sure. I do like this one a lot. And they're really essentially the same knife. They're both, they're both, they're both a grebe. One is just fat carbon, S35VN blade steel. The other one's JG10, <clears throat> 14C28N blade steel. <clears throat> so I don't know if they just do a little extra work on this one. This one's nice and rounded all the way at the top too, just like the other one was. This was really nicely rounded. This looks like it's black stone wash, so that's really cool. I do like that. Um, no blade rock on that. Let's see how we lock in. We're going in. See, nice click. Yeah, any detail? Lash? No. Is it pretty centered? Absolutely spot on dead center. So both of them are really nicely centered. I like that a lot, so that's really cool. And let's see, yeah, really, really cool. Button lock works really well. Yeah, you're not, you're not getting caught on the button lock. Action's really nice. And now it bounces if you keep the button depressed, but if you close it and then let it close like that, it locks it in there pretty good. Same for this one, right? If I keep the button depressed, it's totally free swinging. But if I do that and, and let it engage the plunge lock, it'll lock it in there really nice. So very cool. Very cool. I like them both. Um, just a little disappointed with some of the things in this one. Hopefully, like I said, we'll put a little oil. We'll try to flick a little bit and see if that clears up. So this is my unboxing first impression. Technically, it's my second impression of these. And the second impression is much, much better. I had some issues with both of these at first. I had less issues with this one at first. I had massive issues with this one. This one is, this one feels a little bit better than the original one of this one was. Uh, the original one of this one was not horrible, but the thumb studs was really ridiculous and it was very grindy and gritty and there's a lot of little things that I had and I'm not gonna show that video. I recorded it and I was very, I felt like I needed to reach out to them because you know, honestly, if I got a knife from like a knife retailer, I would reach out to them and say, hey, did I get a dud? Can I, can we replace this? You know, um, <clears throat> sometimes you get a dud and, uh, and sometimes you can replace them. Unfortunately, sometimes you buy a knife that's really cool and it's the last one. It may be a really hot item. Uh, you know, I've, I've reviewed like a, a Heretic Wraith, you know, and I reviewed a, uh, ta a tactile knife company, uh, Maverick. Uh, I think they're both really cool looking knives. My Maverick, just the Phosphor Bronze, I could never get the action to anything like a bug out or a spider coat, which to me, if you're going to do Phosphor Bronze washers, you should be able to strive for that. I get some people want uh, the Chris Reeve, you know, the Spartan Blades, very glassy, smooth roll. I'm not looking for that in a, in a knife of that caliber, right? If I'm going to get a Maverick, I'd like to see it to be very precise, like my, my Paramilitary uh, 2 or my Para 3 or my Mannix 2 or my Shaman, you know, whatever. I like to see that, uh, and that's what I would expect for those. And right now, these guys are, are way better, really nice, I will say. I, can, I, I was, yeah, there we go, I can reverse flick. Revert, the, the placement of thumb studs, I think, is really more the issue for me here, right? It's not the best placed thumb stud, I, I will tell you. Let's see where the liners go. Yeah, the liners are right there. So unfortunately, I couldn't do a, a better cutaway. That would be unfortunate. But you know what you could do if this was my own knife? I could round that out and have a little cutaway there. And, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. Like, here are my thumb studs. You see on this uh, Quiet Carry the Nine, it's cut out. It's got like a chamfering there. And that does give you really nice access to the thumb studs, both you know, this way and reverse flicking. And then you can always do the same over here, right? That nice cutaway. Now this one doesn't have as much cutaway over here on, on the back version, but you know, it's always nice right here. I can just put my thumb here and then I can just open it like that. And that's nice. That's where I'm leveraging the, the, the volcano sort of thumb studs. Here, I don't have a place to do that. I have to go back here. And this is not always the most efficient. I think the best angle for this one is not straight up, it's more yeah, I'm going to say it's more like at a 
45 degree angle, I think it's the best. Like when I come over here and I go straight up, really hard. But if I come over here and 45 degree angle, much, much better. If I do all the way out, yeah, it's not. I think, yeah, I think 45 degree angle is about where I want to be this way. So for that, you know, I might, you know, if I had this knife myself and I really liked it, I want to keep it, I would, might chamfer that. Could use a Dremel, could use, you know, anything you use, a, a file, whatever. As long as you try to make it nice, consistent, and look pretty nice. And I think a, a little chamfering on both sides of this would go a long way for this knife, for sure. Um, all right. That's a lot of talk there for, for uh, first impressions. So if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, or entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button? Subscribing and liking the videos really helps out the channel, allows me to produce more content, do more things, ultimately for you. And I really, really appreciate that. If you've done all that, maybe consider hitting the notification button as well so you can be notified of future content when it's dropped. Hey, and if you've done all that, maybe go check me out over on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.